Okay, so I do a lot of Pokemon battling as you may know, and most of the battles I record don't get to see the light of day unless I add them to the end of a video as a bonus battle. But now, I have quite the collection of battles recorded that seem like a waste to just send to the recycle bin on my PC. So I decided that every now and then, I'll put these battles together and make a dedicated bonus battle video. So that's what today is, a bonus battle day. This will allow me to keep up with the daily videos and let me have more time to work on the videos dedicated to a certain Pokemon. If you think this is a good idea and want to see more bonus battle content, then be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to see more. So with that being said, the first of three bonus battles of the day is against Richard from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord using the old Gumshoes team. Now there won't be a rental code of the teams, I can only have six up at a time, but the Poke Pace for all three teams will be in the description. So without further ado, let's have ourselves some bonus battles. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Richard and his Oshawott. So they're going to lead off with the Magnazone as I led off with my uh, Raquinid. So not a bad lead um, for us because we know they're going to go for a Volt Switch or something. So we go for a Miracle 100% of the time here. They go for an Iron Defense. Oh, that's unfortunate. So um, very unfortunate. So uh, what do we do here then? Miracle, it's not going to work because they're going to body press us, right? So we go for a, we get sticky webs up first and foremost. They go for another iron defense. So this isn't too bad because we can still hit this thing on the special side with one of our special attackers. So I'm not too worried about this at the moment. And um, the only thing I want to do is break the sturdy. I want to break the sturdy, that's for sure. So we'll go for a liquidation. Break that sturdy. And we'll see what item they've got. Iron defense comes through again. So they're at plus six defense. Again, we can hit this thing on the special side if we want to. So we go for a liquidation. If we get a crit, that'd be hilarious. Still does a lot of damage. Does lower their defenses as well. And uh, we are hit by the Rocky Helmet. So they might be sturdy, but the sturdy's broken. We have got a Focus Blast on a you know, Goldengo. And that's about it, really. Let's go into Great Tusk. I say Great Tusk is a good play. Because we should be able to eat your body presses like there's nothing. Should be able to eat them up like there's nothing, really. And then Thunderbolt we're immune to. So they go for a Thunderbolt. Expecting something else, maybe. Um, but no, 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 no. That's not going to work on us. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the Stealth Rocks up first and foremost. We get the Stealth Rocks up. We do outspeed as well, of course, because it's a Magna Zone. Um, let's see what they do here. So they're going to go for a Body Press, which is just going to bounce off us, right? Yeah, the two it KOs. That's fine. We get Rocky Helmet Chip. So we just go for an EQ this turn and get rid of the uh, Magna Zone. It won't KO, but it'll do nearly. It'll nearly KO it. Earthquake comes through. No Terra. And that actually KOs them from there. It was a crit. <laughs> that is unfortunate. So unfortunate. So unfortunate for you. So, with Magnazone gone, we're in a good position. Super Roller comes in. The Oshawott. What's the Oshawott doing? What's it doing here? I want to know what it does. I have no idea. Or I have no clue what an Oshawott will do. In this situation, anyway. So, I think I'm going to just like, bully it a bit. I'm going to go for the Ninetail switch. I don't want to underestimate it, though, because what if he's got some secret tech that I didn't know about? You never know. So Vimto comes in. Nice and shiny. We get the snow warning. They go Aqua Cutter, which is going to bounce right off us. We then go for an Aurora Veil. Aurora Veil comes through. Like so. Now, let's see what this thing wants to do to us now. They go for a Taunt. Interesting. So taunting us is interesting. It's a bit late for that now. As now, we go for an Encore, an Encore into the... Oh, we can't, you, can, you can't use Encore when you're taunted, Jack. Uh, now we go for a Freeze Dry, and we just take this Oshawott, poor Oshawott out. Freeze Dry comes through if it lives, I swear to God. It lived. And he goes for a knockoff, which is going to knock off our Light Clay. So it's, a, it's very much like a utility Oshawott, which is interesting. Um, but we always go for a Freeze Dry again here 100% of the time. They withdraw. What are they going to go into, the Iron Moth? Probably the Iron Moth. I had to guess. They go into Chunks, which is going to be the Garganacle, right? Garganacle is cool. Um, Sticky Webs are going to come into effect, though, and so Stealth Rocks, which is great. We go for a Freeze Dry. And that does some nice damage. Let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to go for a Moonblast, just to get a bit more damage off. And if they go for a Recover, which they, they go for a Salt Cure, it's fine. We're not, we're not taking too much damage from that. The Soul Cure will do a lot of damage over time. But we aren't taunted right now, are we? Are we still taunted? We shook off the taunt. That's great. So now, 
we go for a another moon blast because it should KO from here. They have a quick claw, allowing them to go for a recover, which is very unfortunate for us. So we go for a moon blast. Boom. We get hit by the salt cure. Boom. We're still all right though, because we can now encore this thing to recover. Encore comes through. Keep going for recover. Just keep doing it. It was a really good show. Just keep doing it, okay? So they go for another recover. Now they're probably thinking, well, I can just sit here and recover stall. So I don't think they switch out here. I don't think they switch out here. I'm going to withdraw, and I'm going to go into gum shoes. They're probably thinking, oh, they've predicted me to switch out since I was encored into recover and go into something else. So they go for another recover, right? So I really want them to stay in here. I really want them to stay in here. So I'm going to go for a focus punch. They withdrawed. Are they going to go Gengar though? Magatsu. That is the Gengar. So the Gengar comes in, which is unfortunate. So our focus punch isn't going to work. There we go. See, focus punch isn't going to work. We tighten our focus. We go for the focus punch. And obviously, it doesn't work on a ghost type. So that's that's unfortunate. Um, the Aurora Veil does wear off as well this turn. So we're in a bit of a pick, pick, pickle now. Um, I'm leaning towards the Great Tusk. I think I will go Great Tusk and stack off. I think that's the way to go. So we withdraw. We withdraw our um, Gumshoes. And we'll go into Tuscany once again. They go for a Psychic. Let's see how this does to our Great Tusk. Probably takes us out, right? Yeah, it does take us out. So Great Tusk goes down to the Psychic, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And now, we can just go into pretty much whatever we want. I'm leaning towards the Goldengo. Leaning towards the Goldengo. I'm actually going to go into a Raquinid. I want to get rid of this uh, Gengar. That's what I want to do. Get rid of the Gengar. So, I'm going to go for a Liquidation because it will take it out. And also, it'll hurt anything else they want to switch in as well, like the Garg. They withdraw. What are they going to go into to take a Liquidation? Are they going to sack off Oshawott? I would. Byakia. That's going to be the Galvantula, right? Yeah, Galvantula comes in. Gets caught in the sticky webs and I think Stealth Rocks as well, right? Yep, Stealth Rocks as well, which means the Liquidation does take them out. So, a Raquinid coming through. Boom. Down goes the Galvantula, which is fantastic. So, Gumshoes failed once again. So, this is probably going to be a bonus battle. Chunks comes in. The Garg. Gets caught in the sticky webs and Stealth Rocks, as you would expect. Now, we know they're going to go for a Salt Cure here. So what we need to do is we need to get a free switch into our Ninetales so we can get the Aurora Veil up. So we go for a Liquidation here all the time. They Terror. What type are they going to Terror into? Ghost? Probably Ghost, right? Probably Ghost if I had to guess. Flying. Terror Flying. That's interesting. So Flying Terror is cool. Um, We go for a Liquidation. Like so. Nice bit of damage to them. They get a Salt Cure off, which is fine. Now they go for a Recover and we go into our Ninetales. Get the Aurora Veil back up and then go from there. So there you go, Salt Cured. It's going to do a lot of damage because we're a Water type. Uh, we switch out here into Ninetales 100% of the time. Because they definitely go for a Recover, right? They don't want to get hit by another Liquidation. They don't want to get hit by another Liquidation, so they go for a Recover. We go into Ninetales. Get the Snow Warning up. They go for a recover, which is great. So that's fine. Do we encore them again? They're probably going to expect the encore and they'll probably switch out um, expecting an encore. So let's go for an Aurora Veil first and foremost. They withdraw expecting the encore, which is fair. And they're going to go into Tyrant Rave B, which is the Iron Moth. Gets caught in the sticky webs, which is great. Are they going to be booster energy? If they are booster energy, it's in special attack now. Stones dig in. They are booster energy and this is going to boost their special attack, I think. Yeah, special attack boost because they have the sticky webs drop. So Aurora Veil comes through. Which is great. And we get to keep this for another day as we sack off our Araquinid to a uh, whatever attack this thing wants to go for. There we go, withdrawing Vimto. We're going to go into Araquinid, let it go down. So there we go, Bubbles comes in. They go for a Fiery Dance, which is definitely going to boost their special attack, right? Oh, I did nothing. They do get the special attack boost though. We go for a liquidation here just in case. 
They go for an air slash, though, which is going to take us out. So that's unfortunate. So if Gumshoes is doing anything this game, it's tanking a plus one and a half hit from this thing and KOing it with the likes of Double Edge. So I'm going to go for... No, we can go for an Earthquake, you know, because if they go with Garganacle... Let's go Double Edge and hope they switch into Garganacle. If they switch into Garganacle, they'll witness the true power of Gumshoes. They go for a Sludge Wave. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sting. Isn't going to KO us. It does poison us, though, which is a pretty low chance. I think it's 10% for Sludge Wave. And uh, we go for a Double Edge, which should KO them. It does KO them. So Gumshoes got a KO, which is nice. Gumshoes got a KO, which is very nice. But the poison is going to take us out this next turn. So even though the snow stops, the poison should take us out. <gasps> we lived on two. Please bring in the Garg. Super Roll comes in. That's the Gen Gengar, right? Oshawa. Sticky Webs and Stealth Frogs, my friend. Oh, it didn't KO it, though. We could still use this. I'm going to sack off Ninetales right now. I still want to get the Gumshoes in just to demonstrate the double edge against the Garganacle. So we're going to Vimto. Like so. Snow Warning comes through. They go for an Aqua Jet. See, they would have taken us out anyway. Aurora Veil does wear off. We try and go for another one, but it's not going to work. They go for an Aqua Jet, which does take us out. So there we go. So Aqua Jet takes out Ninetales. Oshawott takes out Ninetales. Don't ask. No answers are given that to this one. So um, now we go into Charizard, I believe. No, we're going to go Goldengo 100% of the time. Or do we go Charizard? I'm going to go Charizard just because we may as well. And we may as well go for a Fire Punch. They go for an Aqua Jet anyway, right? So that's going to do over half. Pops our Citrus Berry. So now we can go for Acrobatics against the Garganacle instead. And what I want to do is Fire Punch comes through, takes out the Oshawa. What I want to do is get the Garg in now and then get Charizard taken out by the Garg and then bring Gumshoes in to go for a double edge. Magatsu comes in, the Gengar. Interesting choice because it's going to get caught in the sticky webs. Oh, no, it's got air balloons, so it doesn't get stuck. Oh, okay. We go for an Acrobatics here 100% of the time. They go for a Sludge Bomb. We should eat that. We don't eat that. They're choice, guys. They're choice specs, if I've ever seen it. Well, they are choice specs. So we go into Goldengo now. And we just go for a Make It Rain, I think. Because it's the best move we've got. Um, we assume they're going to switch. We should trick, really, shouldn't we? We go for a Make It Rain. We are choice scarf, so we can outspeed them. Take out the Gengar and Make It Rain. And that is going to be it for the um, Gengar. So now they can't even switch in to stall the poison on the Garg. So the snow's going to stop. And we just got Garganacle left to go. So Chunks comes in. Like so. Gets some stones damage because it's a flying type. We go for another Make It Rain though. They have a Quick Claw. I forgot about that. So they go for a Earthquake, which is good. Two shots does. We go for a Make It Rain. That's going to do no damage. Does enough damage, actually. Does enough damage. They have to go for a Recover this turn, though. Let's go for a Make It Rain again. So they get another Quick Claw. Allowing them to go for an Earthquake again. Which is fine. We've got 60 seconds left. Can, can, can Gumshoes come in and take this thing out of a Double Edge right now? Is Double Edge the best thing to do, or should we go Knock Off? Nah, screw it. I don't care if the fact that it doesn't count as a win for me. I'm just going to go for the double edge anyway. Double edge comes through. Down goes the Garg. And that's going to be the game. So I say that was a really good game. I don't care the fact that I technically lost because it's recoil damage. I don't care. I really don't care. That was GG. That was a, that was a fun game, Richard. I really appreciate that one. I really appreciate that one. Oh, it does count as a win for me. Nice. GG, Richard. That Oshawa was wild to see. Moving on to our next game, we're up against Dr. Banana Man using the Venusaur team from a little while back. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Dr. Banana Man. So they lead off with Clodzire as I led off with Torkoal. So it's not a bad lead for me, that's that's for sure. It's not the worst lead in the world. 
And we get the drought up and all that. If they want to go for a stealth rock, they can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm expecting stealth rock or something along those lines. Um, so I'm going to go straight into uh, Sliverwing. I think Sliverwing's a sand one. If they go for an earthquake for whatever reason, then it's fine. So we'll go Sliverwing and we'll go straight for an EQ. Or we can predict the Flygon to come in or the Deli Bird to come in. And we can go for a U-turn. It's completely up to us, really. It's, it's whatever. So um, Protosynthesis is going to boost our attack. And if the Clodzire is unaware, the unaware doesn't affect the Protosynthesis boost, which is interesting. So they go for a Stealth Rocks, which is great. That's fine for them. Um, I am just going to go straight for the EQ here. I don't... I, I feel like... I feel like Earthquake is still the best option, so I'm going to go for it. They do withdraw the Clods Are they going to go into the Deli Bird slash Flygon? Dondozo, that's fine. Dondozo is fine. Uh, it's massive, absolutely massive Dondozo is. But we go for an EQ. That should still do a little bit of chip. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, now we'll go straight for a U turn and get on out of there. U turn comes through. Takes it to about half, which is great. They do have Rocky Helmet, which is good to know. Not leftovers. We would have seen the leftovers already, though, so ignore me on that one. Um, now we go straight into Venusaur 100% of the time here. Because they're either going to go for a Curse or a Roost. So we scare them out with the Venusaur, that's for sure. Um, so Point Stones do the game, which is unfortunate. They go for an Order Up, which is a Dragon Time move, I believe, which is a good play. So that's going to do some decent damage to us. Um, now we can pretty much do whatever we want to their team. Venusaur does do really well against them. So I'm going to go for a Power Whip. They do withdraw the Dondozo. Are they going to go Deli Bird? Clodzire. Clodzire is fine. So we're going to hit this thing on the physical side, which is great. Um, we go for Power Whip. We do miss, unfortunately, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, now, I'm expecting Spikes or Toxic or Earthquake. So I'm going to go for a Weather Ball just to get some damage off on this thing. Um, just because I don't want to switch my Sliverwing into a Toxic, you know? Weather Ball still does a respectable amount of damage as well, given that it's Life Orb. They go for a Poison Jab. That's going to sting a little bit, and it is actually going to take us right down. So now they can go for a Recover to stall us out with the Life Orb. So I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to switch out heat to Heatran, because I'm expecting them to go for a Recover here. And they've shown they have Poison Jab, so they can't touch us with Poison Jab or Toxic or Earthquake because of the Air Balloon. Um, so we're, we've got, we're basically completely hard wall this Clods Eye right now. They go for a Toxic Spikes. That's fine. I want to get my Stealth Rocks up. I know that their Hazard Clear is probably Deli Bird with the Rapid Spin. It's the only possible Hazard Clearer they've got on the team for a start. Um, stealth Rocks will help with the team, um, that's for sure. So let's go for a Stealth Rocks while they sell their last Toxic Spikes turn. So they withdraw the Clods Eye. What are they going to go into? Probably Flygon if I had to guess. Primate. Interesting choice because I could have Lava Plume there and burnt it, but it, it, it doesn't matter. So let's go for a Stealth Rocks. There we go. And now we'll switch out because we don't want to stay in against the Primate. It's probably going to go for a Bull Cup or something along those lines. So we want to hit it straight away with something hard. So what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to go into Torkoal first. I know that the, the sun's about to run out, but I'm not really bothered about the sun at the moment. Um, because we can still... We wall this Primate pretty well. Especially if they go for a Close Combat or a Drain Punch here. It's going to bounce right off us. So Stealth Rocks and Toxic Spikes are going to dig in. We can rapid spin those away for the rest of the team, notably Sliverwing, so let's do that. They do go for a U-turn, which is a good play. U-turn is a very good play, because now they get a free switch into Dozo or Flygon. If the Flygon comes in, then we know it's going to Dragon Dance or Earth Power, one of the two. Yeah, Flygon comes in, so they're probably going to Earth Power us. And I don't want that, but I also want to get rid of my hazards. Um, the Sunlight does fade, but I really need to get rid of these hazards. And it's more likely they go for a Rapid Spin anyway. So, do I Terra? No, I don't Terra. I'm going to go for the Rapid Spin. I'm going to expect a, a Dragon Dance. Boom Burst. Powered by Normal Gem. That's going to take me out. Yeah, it takes out Torkoal. So, the Toxic Spikes and the Stealth Rocks are up for good. And that's a pretty cool set. Uh, normal Gem Boom Burst. That's, that's really cool, actually. So, I'm, I'm guessing the Terra Normal as well for that extra oomph. Um, but either way... We'll go into Venus. No. No, because Venusaur won't absorb it. Oh, that's annoying. We'll go into Dragapult, because Dragapult obviously outspeeds the Flygon. If they are Choice Scarf locked in, then at least we know that they're not going to, you know, get anything off. So, and um, we get poisoned, which is unfortunate. Very unfortunate that we can't get rid of those, but it is what it is. Uh, now, looking at the team, I'd say we can just go for a Draco and be, be done with it. So, let's go for a Draco Meteor. They do withdraw the Flygon, of course. Are they going to go into the Clodzire? Dondozo. The sacking off the Dondozo. Interesting choice. So Dondozo comes in. 
We go for a Draco Meteor. That's going to take out the Dondozo. No problems there. And we do get a special attack drop. But you know it is what it is. It is what it is. Delibird comes in, which is a good Pokemon to answer to Dragapult, I think. So with Delibird in, we've got a bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem. Just a little bit of a problem. So the little bit of a problem that we've got. I'm going to withdraw and I'm going to go into my um, Heatran. I probably should have saved Torkoal. That was a bit of a misplay. So I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to go into Heatran. Because we do we, we wall this thing to ever to hell and back. So um, they're going to go for an Endure. Interesting choice. So Endure. Endure. Interesting. So that is a very good strategy. So um, let's go for a Lava Plume. Because I think we're pretty safe to do so. They go for Destiny Bond. As if they got Destiny Bond on this thing. As if they got Destiny Bond on this thing. We go for the Lava Plume. That means Delibird just took out a Heatran. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So Heatran does go down to the Destiny Bond. But at least we got that pesky Delibird out of the way before it could rapid spin away our Stealth Rocks. Going to go into Sliverwing. Because um, the sun's not going to be up anytime soon. So we may as well go into Sliverwing. Sliver Sliverwing over here. They saw the Earthquake earlier. So they probably don't want to take an Earthquake. However... Um, do I predict the Flygon switch and go for a close combat? Or do I go for the first impression? I go for a first impression because they might go Flygon. First impression comes through. Nice bit of damage. It's not very effective. Yada, yada, yada. They go for a poison jab and it does no damage. But it doesn't poison, which is great. No poison from the poison jab. So now we can go for an Earthquake and take this thing out. Um, let's go for an Earthquake right now. If they switch out now, they haven't switched out. We go for an Earthquake. We cleanly take out that Clodzire, which is great. So Clodzire is down for the count. And now we have an Indeedee, which is faster. And sets up Psychic Terrain to block our um, first impression. And they also have a Primate. So Sliverwing, maybe not doing so much this game, but um, it's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sack Venusaur off. I'm going to see if Venusaur absorbs the Toxic Spikes. Stealth Rocks go first, right? It might still absorb them. It's worth a shot. I'm just a death follower at this point. So Venusaur comes in. It does get hurt by the supporting stones, which is unfortunate. And it does faint before it can get rid of the toxic spikes. So that's unfortunate. But it is what it is. Oh no, the poison spikes disappeared. Great. That's great. So they go for a Draco Meteor. They miss. Um, are they... Sp no, they're the normal gems. So of course, they're not specs. I actually said that earlier. I was like, oh, if they're locked into Boom Burst, they, they would normal gem. Ignore me. Um, so now what do we do? Do we go into our Sliverwing and go for a Terra Rock? Um, I think the best play to do is go into Florgius, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Nice and shiny, gotta love it. We do get st uh, Stealth Rock digging into us, which is unfortunate, but it's fine. Um, now we go for a Moonblast all the time here. Um, they Terra Normal, I'm guessing Terra Normal. They Trash Lies anyway. Let's see what they go into, maybe Terra Steel. Terra Normal. So they're going to go for that Boom Burst, Terra Normal Boom Burst, which makes sense. That's a good, powerful stab move right now from a Flygon. So they go for that Boom Burst. And unfortunately for them, it is going to bounce right off us, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it bounces right off us. Floodge can take that for days. We go for the Moon Blast. Boom. Great. So, 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 so. Let's see what we can do here. Let's go for another Moon Blast. I don't see any reason not to. They go for another Boom Burst. Absolutely fine. I suppose in the theory I could have set up, um, could have come in and set up like Carmines, but it's whatever. So Flygon does go down, which is fantastic to the Terra Normal Boom Burst, uh, to the Moon Blast. And that's one big throw out of the way. So with Flygon gone, we're in a good position. In comes the Indeedee, which is a good old switch right there. It can definitely take us out of an expanding force in Psychic Terrain, I think. Um, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to go for a Moon Blast. Don't see any reason not to. They go for an Expanding Force, which is definitely going to take us out, right? Yeah, it takes us out. So that's, that's unfortunate. So Floor just goes down, but it's not in vain because even when DD outspeeds my Sliver Wing, we still have good old Dragapult in the back. So let's go for a Dragapult and we'll go straight for a Draco Meteor. They can't really switch Primeape in, but it's fine. So we get some Stealth Rock digging into us. And we just simply drop a Draco here all the time. They actually outspeed us the Choice Scarf. So that's interesting. So that's going to take out Dragapult. 
that's going to take out Dragapult right there. And our best bet is that um, Slivering, Terra Rock. Oh, I'm Terra Rock. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, it's for flying types. Um, we go for a U-turn here with Terra Rock and hope that we can live. They actually withdraw in DD. Not sure why. They outsped us in KO'd us, unless they're expecting the Terra. They must be expecting the Terra. So Stones are going to dig into Primeape. We Terrastalize real quick into a Rock type. Which actually makes us <laughs> weak to the Primeape. So that's a really good switch. Um, so we transform into a Rock type. Just It was just basically on the off chance that we could live an Expanding Force from a Choice Scarf in DD. Which we obviously probably can't still. But we go for a U-turn. That's going to do no damage. And now we have to go for a close combat and probably go down. Close combat comes through. Primate lives. Goes for a Drain Punch or a close combat. One of the two. Close combat. And that's going to take out Sliverwing. So GG, Dr. Banana Man. That was a fun one. Um, definitely makes a good, a decent little bonus battle to show off how... Because like obviously this Sliverwing video that I've done is... You know. It's, it just, it's, it's good to show bonus battles where you lose. GG Dr. Banana Man, what a fun game. So cool to see Primate putting in the work. On to the next game, we're up against Bradger, and this is actually the first rendition of the Feraligator team from the last video. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Bradger. So they're going to lead off with Mudstar, the Swamper, which I kind of expected, kind of didn't. I was hoping for like a Porygon lead or something like that, uh, or even a Corviknight lead. Um, so the Swamper lead's fine. They're probably going to get their rocks up, so I'm going to go for the same thing. I'm going to go for my rocks. So we get the stealth rocks up, we do outspeed the Swampert, obviously, which is great. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take the liquidation to the face, probably. But no, they go for a flip turn, which is fine. It's going to do over half to us. It breaks our air balloon, but it's absolutely fine. We've got the stealth rocks up. This should bait in the Corviknight. And if we can bait in the Corviknight, well, we're in a good position with Feraligator. Darkrai comes in. That's a good switch. So Darkrai is probably going to want to go for a nasty plot. Now... I want to. I, I really want to switch out. I do want to switch out and preserve this, but if I switch out and they nasty plot, we're kind of boned. So I'm going to have to stay in and go for an earthquake here. They do go for a nasty plot, so we would have been boned. Maybe I should have rapid spin to get the speed boost and then I could get an extra bit of damage off, but we go for an earthquake anyway, and that should... Nah, see, we should have rapid spin, like I said. That's annoying. So let's go for a rapid spin now. They go for a dark pulse, that's going to take out Excadrill. Luckily, we do have the Espeon with the Choice Scarf in the back. So, it's not the end of the world. Um, so, let's go for that. Uh, Espeon real quick with the Choice Scarf. We'll go for an Alluring Voice and just take this thing out. So, there we go. Espeon comes in. And they might not expect this, but they might at the same time. We could Terrify predicting the Corviknight, but I'm going to go for the Alluring Voice anyway. They didn't expect the Choice Scarf as Darkrai goes down. So, that's fantastic. So, with Darkrai out of the way... We're all good. We did lose our hazard clearer in the process, so if they get the uh, stealth rocks up, they're up for good. Amorlia comes in. Is that going to be the uh, Corviknight? Yes, it is the Corviknight. So Corviknight comes in. They know we're Choice Scarf. They've seen it already. Um, so what do we do here? I'm leaning towards the uh, switch into Fraligator. Could be good. I think Fraligator is the best option here. So let's go into Fraligator real quick. Like so. Fraligator comes in, good old Delta. They probably go for a Defog if I had to guess. So we're going to Shiny Fraligator. Nice and shiny. They do go for a Defog, which is fantastic. Means we get to go for a Dragon Dance here. And, and the reason I'm saying on this Dragon, Dragon Dance there on this Corviknight is because A, they are weak to electric. B, if they Terra Water, we can still Terra Electric. <laughs> so let's go for a Dragon Dance here. So Dragon Dance comes through. They probably go for a U turn here. If I had to guess. Let's see. They go for a Brave Bird. So that's interesting. So Brave Bird comes through and does about half to us. They get damaged by the recoil. Now, I want a Terror Electric Dragon Dance again. And the reason being is because I want to make sure I'm fully equipped and ready to sweep this team. It's going to be difficult to sweep the team without a second Dragon Dance. So we'll get our Terror Electric up. They definitely weren't expecting this. We can resist the Brave Bird. And go for another Dragon Dance, which is fantastic. So, Dragon Dance comes through. There we go. They haven't Terraged yet, so we need to watch out for that. They go for a Roost. So, Roost is fine. Roost is very fine. 
We now go for a Terror Blast right now. They may go into Swamp It. If they do, we can just Liquidation it and take it out. They withdraw. Are they going to go Swamp It? Are they going to go Swamp It? Gaia. Who's Gaia? The Hydrapple. Hydrapple is a good play. We go for a Terror Blast. But it's Terror Electric, so it's going to be four times resisted. So it's not going to do anything to this Hydrapple. Yeah, no damage. No damage at all. We lose some HP as well because it's not Sheer Force boosted. So... Now I'm leaning towards Crunch. I'm going to go for the Crunch because Liquidation is just not on the table. It's not an option. So they're going to Terrastalize. What are they going to Terrastalize into? Hopefully something weak to Crunch. That'd be nice. Steel. So Steel is still fine. Crunch is neutral to Steel. So Inferior could have gone for a Liquidation, but I didn't know they were going to Terra Steel. So we, we go for a Crunch. D nearly takes them out, which is great. They go for a Fickle Beam and that finishes off for Alligator, which is unfortunate. So... Frolicator did good. You know, it, it, it didn't do, it didn't take out a single Pokemon. So, this ain't a Frolicator video. <laughs> That's for sure. So, uh, now I'm leaning towards Poltergeist uh, on the uh, Dust Snow because they don't really have the best switch into Poltergeist. Uh, we could also go for an Earthquake. Um, I'm also leaning towards the Iron Moth. Iron Moth could be really good here. In fact, I am going to go Iron Moth. So, Iron Moth can come in right now. Mothra.exe comes in. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. We get that booster energy in special attack. Oh, it should be special attack. Yes, it is. That's great. And then we go for a agility here because they might switch out to preserve the Hydrapple and go into the Swampert. They should switch out anyway, as they do switch out, which is great. Um, what are they going to go into? Mudstar. That's the Swampert. So Swampert is an interesting one because we do have the energy ball, so this is not a threat. Uh, we go for the agility, though. And we're pretty much ready to sweep. So Iron Moth's looking pretty good right now. So let's go for an energy ball real quick. They withdraw Mudstar. Are they going to go into Superior slash Corviknight? Gaia comes back in the Hydrapple. That's an interesting choice. So Hydrapple comes in. We go for an energy ball. It should still do a nice little chip damage. Yeah, it does a bit of chip. There we go. As now Fiery Dance should KO this thing. If they go into Swampert, we don't lose anything from just... Going for the obvious play right now. They can switch around as much as they want. They withdraw again. Are they going to go into Mudstar? Are they going to go into Mudstar? They do go into Mudstar. That's fine. I don't mind Mudstar coming in. Because at the end of the day, my Fire Dance could give me a special attack boost. So Fire Dance comes through. Does a nice bit of damage. We do get the special attack boost, which is fantastic. So not only are we 1.2 times from the Quark Drive, we're 1.5 times from the Fiery Dance, and we're 1.2 times speed. So we're very fast and very strong right now. Let's go for an energy ball. Yep, yeah, they stay in. I figured they would. Because when you do this switching thing, eventually you start to expect your opponent to predict your switch. In this case, I was like, I didn't lose anything from not going for an energy ball there. Because even if they bring in the Hydra Ball like they have done, we should be still be able to take it out with a Fiery Dance either way. So let's go for a Fiery Dance now. Fiery Dance comes through. It should take out the Hydra Ball unless they're at AV. Which, it doesn't matter if they are, because it should still take them out. As down goes the Hydrapple, which is fantastic. So, Iron Moth coming through. What an absolute legend. Glitch of the past comes in. That's going to be the Porygon. Yep, yeah, the Porygon Z. Nicely done. So, I'm going to go for the Sludge Wave, just because it's the more powerful option. Sludge Wave comes through. And that should take out the Porygon Z as it does. So, Porygon Z goes down, which is fantastic. Now we just have a Superior and a Corviknight left, which is great. So we've got a nice little Iron Moth sweepy sweep. As uh, Armalia comes in the Corviknight. But unfortunately, they don't think there's anything Corviknight can do towards it. It exerts some pressure, so we're going to use a bit more PP, but it's fine. We'll go for a Fiery Dance. We've got plenty of PP. Fiery Dance comes through. And that cleanly destroys, melts the Corviknight, which is amazing. So now they just have Superior left, which is absolutely great. Natrix comes in. That's going to be the superior. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. We go for a fiery dance here. 100% of the time. Fiery dance comes through. And down goes the superior, which is great. So, GG Bragger. That was a pretty fun one. Iron Moth came through in the end and swept, which is amazing. This will make a nice little bonus battle for the team. GG. GG Bragger. Iron Moth popped off big time. What did you think of the custom shiny I gave it? Anyway, that's the lot. Let me know if you want to see more bonus battle videos by leaving a like on the video. And with that being said, I'll catch you all in a bit.